Well, Venezuelan opposition leader or figure Juan Guaido, a man who, by the way, referred to himself as the president of Venezuela. Wouldn't that be nice? Just one day you wake up and you declare yourself president. Well, he was at the Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., one of the many think tanks that comprise the sort of permanent war brain trust, the military industrial complex brain trust. Dan Cohen was there. Sparks were flying. People trying to throw and hurl some hurl some insults and questions at Juan Guaido. I've seen some of these uh, some of these amazing videos online and people being hauled out of there. You were there. What happened, Dan? Take us through this event. Who is uh, who is Juan Guaido and why? Why were people so angry? Yeah, Clayton. So as soon as Juan Guaido, the former self-appointed so-called president of Venezuela, as soon as he started speaking, the whole event went off the rails. Protesters from the anti-war group Code Pink interrupted him. Watch this. Juan Guaido is a liar, 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 a here you'll see one of Guaido's fellow coup plotters, David Smolansky actually dragging a Code Pink protester out, even putting him in a chokehold. And this protester is much smaller than Smolansky, as you can see, and also much older. So this looks to me like a pretty clear-cut case of assault. And the Wilson Center apparently is perfectly fine with allowing guests to self-deputize as security and assault people who interrupt their events. Um, so... Guaido got to speaking after the protesters were dragged out. He talked about how the maximum pressure campaign sanctions uh, that the Trump administration um, took to a much higher level. These actually began with the Obama administration when uh, Obama declared Venezuela as a national security threat to the United States. And then the Trump administration, when it uh, decided to go along with, with the coup attempt, um, brought to a whole nother level and uh, completely cut off Venezuela from the, the international uh, economy. So Guaido talked about how this maximum pressure campaign to oust President Nicolas Maduro failed. And he said that if he goes back to Venezuela, that he will be imprisoned. And he compared himself to the Russian opposition figure, Alexei Navalny. Now, Guaido is accused of treason in Venezuela. Keep in mind, he has been in Venezuela for years attempting to lead a coup, calling on the military to defect, um, all while flying in and out of the country to the United States, to Europe, and he was never once touched by the police. They knew exactly where he lives. They, uh, uh, he, the, the police, um, <laughs> they, they know exactly where he lives. There was no hiding. And so thanks to the U.S., Guaido and his collaborators are in the process of embezzling some $8 billion from Citgo, which is the American corporation based in Houston, Texas, that is owned by the Venezuelan government that processed uh, Venezuelan oil. And it's likely to be a lot more as this embezzlement scheme that they're running goes on. There's also roughly $2 billion worth of gold uh, that the Bank of England stole from Venezuela to give to Guaido and his collaborators. So they've pillaged Venezuela and the authorities have never touched this guy. It is amazing. I saw, you know, a bunch of people in that room, a bunch of different reporters that I uh, that I trust were there. And, you know, it's amazing to see Max Blumenthal. I love this comment. He said, Guaido's legacy is the theft of billions from the Venezuelan state by imperialist powers and the deprivation of millions. That's his legacy. And, and everyone knows that this money has been stolen. Everyone knows that this is the case and untouched by authorities. Yeah, there's no one that better represents the pillaging of Venezuela than the leader of Guaido's party called the Popular Will Party. His name is Leopoldo, Leopoldo Lopez. 
And he's actually a much more important figure than Guaido himself. He actually handpicked Guaido from the lower ranks of their party to be the front man for the coup attempt uh, in 2019, supported by the Trump administration. And Lopez now lives in one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in Madrid. There's a photo of him in this high-end Madrid restaurant that went viral to highlight how well he's living. How well he's living. Will Venezuelans suffer under sanctions that he supports? So I actually caught up with Leopoldo Lopez. He was there. So watch this exchange with him. So to this point, when Mr. Guaido called on the military to to support him as president, that didn't work. Uh, now the opposition seems to be moving on without Mr. Guaido. And even the Biden administration has authorized Chevron to buy uh, uh, Venezuelan oil again. So um, how is how is your party relevant outside of this room? And how can and uh, what is the next step that that your party will take to, to try to seize power? Well, um, unfortunately, our political party, now that you mentioned the Voluntad Popular, is the, the most persecuted organization in Venezuela. So we've tried everything. So I think it's um, futile to identify one or another way of um, addressing this very complex problem as, uh, as the right or wrong solution. Because uh, there is a false dilemma uh, many times around Venezuela and other countries uh, between maximum pressure and, and no pressure at all. Well, um, some people would argue maximum pressure didn't lead to a transition to democracy. That might be true, but did no pressure uh, uh, led to transition to democracy? No, it hasn't either. So Leopoldo Lopez basically acknowledged that their party uh, has failed, their coup attempt has failed, and they're incredibly unpopular even among the opposition parties. He did not negate anything I said there. So these guys promised that they'd be able to overthrow the Venezuelan government with the full fury and backing of the United States, even putting a bounty on Maduro's head. And they're living high in the hog in Washington, uh, in Washington, D.C., in Miami, in Madrid. And, you know, Lopez swears that Venezuela is a dictatorship, this horrible dictatorship. But when I asked him, well, then why was Guaido never once arrested, even though he's accused of treason? for attempting to lead a coup d'etat. So listen to this. If Venezuela was under this dictatorship that you described, why is Mr. Guaido not in prison? He was able to walk around freely and, and declare himself president, which obviously the Maduro government rejected. So why was he not sitting in prison, tortured and persecuted, as you described? Well, he was, he's, he's not in prison today because he was not caught by the dictatorship. They couldn't catch him? They couldn't catch him. And he, there were... Uh, they knew there, where he lives. Huh? They know where he but lives. But he had been in hiding for weeks before he left Venezuela. But I'm talking about for because, years. I mean, it was years ago that he declared... Well, you, the, should, you should ask the dictatorship. But the I, intelligence could not find well, him let me for tell you years? No, let me tell Are they you that something. incompetent huh? that they could not let find me, Guaido let me for tell you years? It's not, it's not me that I'm saying that it's not me so so let's it's important. he's walking around let, as a free man let me let me and you're let, saying he's persecuted by the was, dictatorship he is, yes he is and I'm is the intelligence really that Caracas. incompetent that they couldn't find him in you, you, all of Caracas you can ask Maduro about that yeah the intelligence community has no idea where this guy is and it also legitimizes Juan Guaido this idea the you know author of two failed military coups like that the west will protect him at any length i think i even remember france going to great lengths to protect him uh, at the french embassy in caracas and so these western these western leaders and these western countries with their intelligence apparatus are all intertwined but they don't seem to know where the guy is they just have no idea where he is i find it laughable yeah, I mean, you just, it, it's its amazing. They just, Leopoldo Lopez must think I'm dumb or must think most people are dumb or they just go along with it. The idea that they couldn't find him, the most incompetent intelligence officials ever, but they're so brutal, but they're incompetent. Like, right. I don't know, it, just, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. And, uh, you know, I was the only, there were no other reporters there calling this out who had anything to say. There were the, the protesters who said, you guys are liars, which is true, but I was the only journalist there who had anything to say, which any any questions, which, you know, I think says everything about the Beltway press corps, that they're all subservient. Um, they're all just going to go with the, the headline that, oh, um, Guaido fears he could be arrested if he returns to Venezuela. And it's like, no, that maybe, maybe they will arrest him. Who knows? But to this point, they never did. And frankly, 
he's he committed treason. So it would make perfect sense for 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 the government to arrest him. And I would look. Yeah. And I would love to know who who foot the bill for him to come to Washington, D.C. and be a part of this uh, this think tank speech as well. You know, was it was it U.S. taxpayers, the intelligence community is the Wilson Center itself. Like, I would love to know how how this trip is arranged um, and uh, and 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 put together. It's it's amazing. Uh, the people that the Wilson Center invites to uh, to sit on its panels. Dan Cohen, thank you so much for covering this, going there, being the only journalist in the room to ask tough questions. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.